over the river like a poplar, like a green sycamore. The military camp sprawls across the damp floor. Their camouflage jackets ripple before my eyes, and still and still, no one has died. Tell me, tell me, why is this army here? The snow stained yellow like rancid beer, the snow curled up like old cottage cheese. Who has appointed my enemy today, please? Maybe Ira Evza or Kabanov comes in a roaring crescendo of rattling drums. Maybe a dark overcoat will be thrown over me where the chill winds rustle the tree by my enemy Gogol and Shevchenko, my foe. Maybe Lesia is hunting me over the snow. Maybe everyone I know, everyone I love, is dangling nooses for me from above. The wintry rags of the roads rip through the snow. Camouflage backs are flickering. Oh no, my good brother Kiev and Harkiv, my dear. I will never believe the nonsense spread here. This place is bewitched, but there's no way to fight when your foes are invisible and the devil's in sight. All wriggle and twist, but in daylight's frame melt away like wax in the candle flame. A rotten new year. The garlands descend, bitter neighbour ice near, and you, my dear friend, you sat on that wall with your arm round me. Nod to me quick or just call from your eternal peace. Alone here I'm terrified amid mounds of deep snow and beneath our wall how wide the smoke of war grows. The laughter loud and heady, and few feel danger enough, but the world you knew already will soon be stuffed with shame and with blood, with noisy slander, with this dirty ice flood thawed going under, with death's gape near and a crowd of refugees. You knew it all, dear. Just give me something, at least. Mama, mama, war, war, in the heart echoing, guilty, guilty, her son burning in the morning roar. Oh, I cannot be forgiven, for my country brought fire, my country. There's the highway running by with its river of tanks, grim flowing. I didn't stop them, did I, did I? Now from our street there is a guy raised up on pitchforks showing. Mama, mama, because of me they're shouting to our lads. Hey, Rusky, fuck off, you're not invited, see? Friends sleep in basements and freeze in lovely Kharkiv because of me. Houses in Zuliani are aflame, and I'm crazy like a dog with each shot fired in Ukraine. Petersburg and Saratov are maimed, and my house is cloaked in fog. It's my fault. I, hiding my fear, lived with the killer in my head in the same apartment here. He's in the shooting gallery now, I fear, ripping the map to shreds. Mama, mama, war, war, in the heart echoing, guilty, guilty. Who's killed? Who's wounded? For with each shot in this Ukrainian war, my country shrinks. My country There will be no coffins. Our children will be cremated in the camp stove and their ashes will spread over the fields of Ukraine like a black tourniquet twisting around in the smoke of the fire. There ahead. There'll be no dead body, but a polite officer will deliver the ashen results of the cremation in a neat package and lay it quite still below the photo as the swift demobilization becomes a contract. Undoing his case, he'll take out the papers and in a moment, sitting stranded on a stool, hiding his face, says, sign the non-disclosure agreement. She will sign and he will go back hurriedly 
pass the time with Baskov singing on TV, while on the bunk, the younger brother, a ninth grader, watches him closely, as if expecting his own packet imminently. My sons will never go there to kill. I'll hide them in the basement, beneath the bed. I will. You will not get them for your vile hunger, neither executioner nor hunter, not elder nor younger. Abandon your hopes. No Ukrainian mother will ever weep because of these brothers. Send your own sons to fight your ends. Share kit bags among their well-fed friends. There are countless pits in Ukraine's ways, much deeper, so Boyan the prophet says, and the blind see clearly this way. You will not take my sons to this fight. I will turn both to blackbirds in flight. You can't pull the moon from the sky and they'll not share your shame by and by. Their hearts will stay pure and untrammeled and their dusty boots will never trample forever cursed another's wide land by the bright Dnieper and the broad Don's strand. We'll pay the full price, an unjust war, debased grandfather's orders. I hold them in my hand and I say, sorry, grandfather Ivan, the doctor in a besieged military hospital. I want to hear what he would say about rocket volleys, ours, on Kiev. I lower my head and remain silent. Grandfather, I hear your voice. Why did our soldiers die near Moscow, that Russians now make Ukrainian women widows? Cain, Cain, where is your brother Abel? The Nazis are shooting at Kharkiv. They're shooting at Kiev, too. Skyscrapers turn black with cinders. Tell me, Nazis, just who are you? You're probably Wehrmacht soldiers rising up from the dead ground to turn Kharkiv into Guernica and bomb Volnavarka down. I'm half expecting to hear, like an old movie stuck in my brain, resounding under native roofs, the cruel German accent again, curt, brutal and hateful, the face slap of alien speech. But the words that fly with the bullets are native. Am I crazy, I screech? The burning words are my own and I know each one as it comes and I wish this army was silent, completely speechless and dumb. Then I could think of the panzers of von Kleist or of Manstein, and the end credits will roll away and the tanks dissolve on the screen. But no, they're not Nazis, but Russians, hurtling across the same levels. And this is no reconstruction, but a communion with the devil. And this insane hammer is crushing, flourishing cities with pain. No grandchildren will ever pray for us, nor great-grandchildren. Never again. A lamp, a table, a patch of wall, an unfinished cup of tea, here our before the war call, standing behind quietly. The same heat from the stove rising, the pink soap, the colour of plaster, only a thin sheet of glass dividing now, before and after. The same street through the window pane, the melting piles of snow, but at the thought of spring again, a lump 
comes to my throat. No, nobody now will need us. Shrove Tuesday is here again. Just funeral pancakes to feed us for those killed in Ukraine. Music playing in a restaurant. A woman, a candle, a glass of wine there. Ukraine is right out on the edge, invisible from here, somewhere. The flames are spreading, the quarters collapsing. The cry, shame, rings out from the square. The woman with a slightly tired motion deftly adjusts her hair. The sleek, matte, white tableware. Dessert and cappuccino froth, far away, floating in a haze, comes someone's little death. Just a dot, a small P, that's all. Nobody knows yet, I guess. At this table, here too, it will fall in a bloody, shapeless mess. Russia will be abolished, together with Pushkin and Tolstoy. When the smoke over Ukraine dissipates, only the ruins of our realm will show. We'll breathe hard, and in memory of a destroyed maternity hospital in Mariupol, Frida's handkerchief will be served us every morning in a bravura rhythm to underline our mooing or moaning, and Russia will be abolished with Pasternak and Chekhov, with Moidadir, the Nutcracker. In fact, why should one remember them more than the ruins of hospitals and schools? A fence will form our border, adorned with burning skulls, and after they growl their last, they will rot on our heads. We will stay here with our customary talk of peace and work, and will write you letters from hell with love. But they will not reach you. The monster V stalks Ukraine, one step, no bridge, and without a pause, Volnavarka, dripping blood, is hanging from his jaws. Soon, bombed out, Kharkiv crunches between his rotten fangs, and the blue Dnieper in his hands smells rank where misery hangs. Trampling spring, squashing love, planting just the dead. The monster V stalks Ukraine with his giant letter Z. Zigzag, this swastika fragment, slashes the window frame, striking oblique horror with all the world its aim. On tanks, on walls, and in the dust, on the outside and the in, if you see it, erase it from the earth as if it's never been. And what were you thinking, fool? An admiralty needle is now all that's left of your Russia. You lost it, not saved it at all. Filthy ice melts on the moika, under the bridge crow tracks patter. And what is left of you? Not now, some day later. March, warm bliss on the face. The sun shines bright and plentiful. A breeze, blood of killed Ukrainians on the hands, indelible. The louse has arrived. You shudder, but don't expect trouble here. 
It swells for a while until the leader appears from under whitish eyelashes. Then, too late for itching, you're compelled to fall prostrate. Give up everything which was your life before park. Subway, roofs, pencils by the score. From your pencil case, give son, give daughter away. To the hissing, give up, give up and get away. You lie down and think, how did it pass? Why didn't I? A a rascal, a jerk, an ass. Why didn't I nail it while it was small? I just wanted warmth, that's all. I sat in the country, in the office, the work show, in the bar with soft music, not noticing it grow, to cover the sky, swallowing spring's core, swelling, swelling, the louse starts a war. You wanted to ignore it. Go away, please. But now, through mountains of bloody bodies, it's looking at you while you spit. Bat. Ugh, you said. It bit everyone, and through the country typhus spreads, and now the louse has taken everything. Home, sleep, soft nature, the city in spring, it's made you run for the hills in flames, your eyes blinded with rage and shame. It throbs in the temples, first painful, then ill. The louse must not live. Find it and kill. When the war is finally passed and Ukraine is saved from us at last, when after coughing fumes in pain, they build Kharkiv once again, when the black nightmare is gone, then in flowers will rise her son, and Izium and Mariupol will rise and we will go downhill. We will quietly shrink away, but we will stop our killing ways. Let go of all those bitter threads and begin to count the dead, their names lost in fields and fogs, reading like a shipping log, and maybe one Sunday morn we may finally be reborn, having lost all teeth and claws. So Lvivians and Kievans won't have cause any more to scare their kids just mentioning us and what we did. That's how fate takes you by the scruff of the neck, like a slave, a killer, a thief, and says, let's go. You creep after her, stifling a cry, leaving your hole. Your house is not blown apart, like in Mariupol, but acrid shame has ruined everything. All your cutlery in place, but you read the news in the morning and you notice there is a hole in your skull, as if from a bullet. Everything that you loved The star in the window, the pines, your car, the carved hut, the dust on your bookshelf. Everything is destroyed in a moment by this moron. Who knows down which path the country should walk over corpses, over ruins, over me with his whole army opening its gape to swallow all living things. How can I act? What should I do to avoid following on this special path, meaning death? I do not want to look on this body lying in the street in a green coat soaked in blood. I did not want this Elijah and this Peter to be killed by boys from our yard, nor the bloody mess, the looted houses, the eyeless walls, the burned out cars. It's not me. I'm just a shadow of what I see. A soldier 
rapes a girl today and Pilate washes his guilt away as Ukraine is impaled upon the cross while the Russian Adam's failures can't abate from stealing stuff. I'll recreate, whispers the potter, crushing this clay to dross, this earth rotting with maggots. Yes, recreate this once paradise that the moths ate. Let it all go dry, let the evil burn out, the rivers, steel fences, houses and that, the barrack, stations, and I'll go myself for scrap with my rotten land about. I'm a part, all the world understands, of this monster that squeezes in its hands everything warm and living. And so, crush me and cancel me. Not a squeak, nor reproach, no tears, nor howls will I be giving.